The biggest thing with our delegation, is like I, I've said earlier, we got a lot of firepower on our delegation. We've got Brian White as chairman of Ways and Means. He's our senior member. Uh, everybody knows the state budget begins in the House, and that begins with Brian White and his committee. Uh, next up in seniority is myself. I was in the House for 10 years, and now I've been in the Senate going on my second and third year. Uh, and then behind me, we have Miss Ann Thayer. Ms. Thayer's been just a godsend for our delegation. She's a hard worker and she, she's, she's really got, her heart's in the right place. And all our delegation members, their heart's in the right place. And then behind her, you've got uh, Representative Gagnon, and, uh, who is, represents mostly Abbeville County, and, but he also represents the lower part of Anderson County, Holland Park, Star, Iva, that area, and he works with us hand in hand on, on things that we need. Uh, we've got Representative Putman from up in the Powdersville area, which is an incredibly fast growing area. Uh, and, and he's really had his hand and been involved in the, in the development in that area. And also we've got Representative Jay West, who's newly elected in House District 7 of Bells and Honey Path, Star and Iva. Uh, is just jumped in with both feet, doing a good job, fitting right in. Uh, newest, newest member of the delegation is Senator Richard Cash, who's, who's as he stated earlier, he'd been in the Senate for one day. But uh, and and the thing that we fight and that we try to do as a delegation, with the death of Senator O'Dell and Senator Bryant moving on to Lieutenant Governor, we lost about 40 years experience. Uh, seniority, I guess I should say, just in the Senate. And in the Senate, everything's about seniority. But they have, the Senate has been very good to welcome Senator Cash and myself in and, and presented us with some opportunities to help make up that difference for Anderson County. And the good thing about our delegation, I brag on our delegation a lot, we're, most of the time we're all pulling in the same direction. Uh, you know, do we have differences? Sure you do. Uh, anytime you get a group of three or more, you're going to have differences. But it's always constructive differences. Uh, you know, we try to settle our differences behind closed doors. We don't try to make a big out front public show like some do. That's not always the case in Columbia. Uh, a lot of delegations, and y'all have heard me use this example, a lot of delegations don't even sit together. And I think that's a real shame. And, but I think with our delegation trying to work together and pull in the same direction, along with our relationship with our county council, our local governments, our education partners, uh, our public education partners, I think we're seeing the fruition, the fruits of that labor realized in Anderson County with the announcements that we've had, the economic development announcements we've had. And, and you know, I'll be honest with you, the quality of life in Anderson County has really come to the forefront with some of the things we've done. I, I look at Wren Park in the city, and then, then, then uh, you know, and the, and the things that we tried, the walking tracks that we, the county did several years ago, uh, and we tried, of course, Lake Hartwell. We're, we're sitting on a gym in Lake Hartwell. I, I tell them we should have every corporate headquarters of every major company in America because of Lake Hartwell. The things that have happened at Green Pond Landing with, in conjunction with ourself, DNR, and the county. Uh, you know, the Bassmaster Classic is the big one that you hear all about, but there's, they have a fishing tournament out there almost weekly. And it's incredible what these things contribute to our local economy. Uh, it just mushrooms out. Uh, you know, I've always heard that uh, for every dollar you invest, it's about a 30 to 1 uh, return. And, 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 and Senator Leatherman's always said, he said, I'll tell you right now, he said that 30 to 1 is conservative. And he's right. He's exactly right. And I, I think all those things have come together, and Anderson County is now seeing the fruits of, of that. And, and that, that's important because, you know, we, we're, we're in Columbia, we're at the state level, and our federal delegation. Our federal delegation works well with us also. We can pick up the phone. We're constantly in touch with them. They're in touch with us. We're in touch with county council. They're in touch with us. Our local governments, our educational friends, the Clemson Anderson University, Tri-County Tech, uh, district, five school districts in Anderson County. Uh, you know, can't say enough about the five school districts. It hadn't always been this way, but now the five school districts are kind of pulling in the same direction. Uh, it used to be a real boundary war years ago, and now they're working together. And like I say, with the construction, with the Career and Technology Center that Districts 1 and 2 have had for a number of years, working with Tri-County Tech and Greenville Tech. And also what we're seeing with Districts 3, 4, and 5 building their Career and Technology Center. It, it just continues to get better in Anderson County. And, I, you know, we don't, we don't take full credit, boy, but, but you know, it, it, it's, we play a part. I think we play a vital, important part. When I, when I was first elected, my predecessor in the House, Ronnie Townsend, he gave me the best advice I think I ever heard. He said, when you get to the House General Assembly, he says, pick out two or three people that think like you do and watch how they work. 
and, and, and like it or not, there is a system of how things work in Columbia. And I've, I've always been a proponent that you get more done working with it, learning to work in that within that system than you do trying to beat your head against the wall and fight that system. Uh, you know, and, and two of those people that I picked out was on our delegation. It was Dan Cooper and Brian White. Uh, you know, they had been there long enough uh, to, to know how to get things through and get things through the system. And that's what I garnered from my first years in the General Assembly, and we've tried to pass that on to our newer members. Uh, and that, like I say, you, you build on that. And, and, and everybody's got a different area of expertise. Uh, Ms. Thayer. Ms. Thayer was our, she was on foster care review for years. Uh, she's kind of the person we lean to on that. Uh, you know, economic development and, and, and dollars and cents, that's Brian's specialty. Uh, my, my, I grew up in the emergency services. Uh, I was in the Anderson County Fire Department, still am. Uh, emergency services is kind of my area. Uh, you know, Jay West is, is involved in education and also in economic development. Uh, you know, and Mr. Putnam, he's involved as far as uh, in, in his area in Powdersville. He's, he kind of keeps his feet on the ground as far as constituent issues and things. And uh, even even in uh, Representative Gagnon and also now our newest member, Senator Cash, uh, you know, we all complement each other, but we continuously try to build by kind of picking each other's brains. Uh, you know, because what we, what we fight in Columbia, Brian and I are the two senior members of the delegation now. Uh, we've been there, we've seen a lot, but you know, you have to fight the urge to not have an open mind to new ideas. And the, our delegations, the, build, the biggest building block for our delegation has been we've got a good blend of experience plus newer ideas coming in. And, and I think that's kind of helped build the trust on our delegation with each other. And also, Anderson County delegation is looked at as a whole in the General Assembly. A lot of people come talk to us about things, and we're always happy to, to help. And you know, and, and that's that's you know that's kind of the way we were raised. <laughs> it all goes back to your raising, I guess you should say. But you know, and, and people appreciate that, especially now. But I think those are the biggest building blocks that we, we saw as we kind of, you know, as we change over, the newer members kind of watch the members that have been there for a while, and, and we win, we learn from them also. And I think that's the biggest building block for our delegation It's kind of got us to where we are. Sure. Makes a big difference. Uh, the thing, you know, by us working together and keeping everybody involved in the process, uh, that way we meet with them probably face to face. Brian and I, and then other members of the delegation may see them out to dinner, or they may call them up and just ask them. And it's it's very uh, fluid, and they hear the same message, and that means a lot because you know when when everybody's playing the same tune and pulling in the same direction, it's good things that happen. And I think that's been a big plus. And like I say, you know, can't discount our county our county folks. Same way. Uh, you know, we've all got Anderson County's best interest in mind, in mind when we when we go on these uh, economic development trips, and it, it's paid off. Uh, you know, we we always talk about the the the, Bo, uh, the you know Boeing in Charleston. We got Michelin here in Anderson County, uh, who's a big employer. Um, you know, of course, our Arthrex outfit, first quality, uh, and then also Bosch. The Bosch people always tell me, said, you know, everybody says Boeing, BMW, and Michelin. Well, Bosch is the fourth largest employer in the state. And the last things we had, and that our Bosch friends keep telling us, we keep waiting on y'all to include us in that fourth. He said, always think the fourth one. Don't stop at three. And, and that's a good problem to have. Uh, you know, and, and one thing with economic development is they know when they come to Anderson County, from the state level, from the federal level, to county level, down to the local level, that once we get them here, we don't forget them. We keep meeting with them. We keep trying to enhance their position in Anderson County. And it, it just improve, constantly improves the quality of life for our citizens. I think they are. I think it started out as a curiosity. <laughs> Let's face it, we're all Southerners. And, you know, and it was so different. And I've had folks tell me that, you know, they, they walk, they come and visit Anderson lots of times before we ever meet with them. And they'll go to a restaurant somewhere in the county or downtown Anderson and they'll walk down the street. And the one thing that sticks to them is everybody they meet speaks to them. And they just they go back and they go, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> yeah, but then all of a sudden, well, maybe it's not wrong. That's the one thing we hear over and over and over. 
is how friendly our folks are and how willing to listen and talk to them they are, whether they know them or if they first met them. And that's, that's the one thing that's always kind of tickled me, is, is when they come, it's, it's just a totally different thing. And I think that goes back to our citizens. They present the face of Anderson County before we ever get involved. And then it, it makes it a lot easier. My background was in the fire service. Uh, I was chief of friendship. I grew up, when I was a little boy, there's a picture of me. In, in the beginning, Anderson County, the communities built the fire departments. There's a picture of me when I was six, seven years old, riding a scoop pan, being pulled behind an Alice Chalmer tractor, building, the, setting the foundation for the fire department known as Friendship Fire Department now in our community. I grew up in the fire service. My dad was involved in the fire service. I was in the fire service as an officer and as a fire chief. Became involved with, and you know, that kind of gets you involved on the local level with things that affect the fire service. Then I was elected chairman of the Anderson County Fire Chief Association. I was also named to the Anderson County EMS Commission. That kind of, we kept involved with the local levels, but it also, that kind of garnered our interest in statewide issues that affected the emergency services. Uh, and, and I always helped folks with uh, Senator Odell, Representative Townsend, always helped them on their campaigns. And the, the, the kind of funny story, uh, Ronnie Townsend called me one night and he said, uh, you know, so we've got a news conference tomorrow. And I said, well, what y'all got going on? He laughed. He said, well, I'm retired. And I told him, I said, well, what have I got to do to talk you out of it? And he laughed. He said, what have I got to do to talk you into it? Well, I lost the argument. You know? <laughs> and, and the funny story is uh, Renee and I talked about it and prayed about it and finally went down to tell my parents. And uh, I'm an only child, and, and my, my, I went down to tell my parents. I said, what would you think if I ran for the South Carolina House of Representatives? This back in 06. My daddy looked me squarely in the face. He said, boy, have you lost your mind. <laughs> and my mama's going, Aaron, Aaron, you know. <laughs> so we just kind of looked at each other and wandered back home. <laughs> but, it, but after we got into it and decided we were going to run, my dad and my mother probably worked as hard for me as anybody. My dad's my sign guy. He always has been. Him and, and there, he handles all the signs. And he doesn't, he doesn't want any help. He said, nope, we got it. And he's now 84. And, but uh, but that's kind of how I got it. That's the progression of I got involved. And and couldn't have had two better mentors than Ronnie Townsend and Billy O'Dell. Uh, you know, I, I always tell a story when I first got elected. I said, uh, you know, I was an incoming freshman in the house. I was ready to change the world. And I'd come up with some earth-shattering legislation. I'd always take it to Senator O'Dell. Senator O'Dell had been in the, in the Senate for 18 years when I first got elected. Billy would always do the same thing. He'd always look it over and he'd read it all the way through. And he'd always reach over and he'd pat me on the arm. He said, Mikey, we've tried this. It don't work. He said, but if you want to try it again, we will. So after about the fourth or fifth trip, I quit going. <laughs> but he was as patient with me. <laughs> and, and I'll never forget that. I'll never forget those memories and that help from he, he and Ronnie on that. And then, and once we were elected, uh, like I say, our, our, our delegation, Dan Cooper, Ann Cooper's one of the smartest people I've ever met. Uh, he's got a, fi a mind for figures that he remembers stuff that I forget to write down. Um, he was very inst instrumental in, in furthering my political career. And then, of course, uh, two years ago, January 6th, this year is when we lost Senator O'Dell. And uh, that's when we had another hard decision to make. And, and, we, and we decided to do it. And the people have been awful good to us. They've been real receptive to, to, to the things that we that we campaign on and stand for. And we were, we were fortunate enough. And I say this to every group that I talk to. I, I truly mean it when I tell you thank you for the honor and privilege of allowing me to serve you in the South Carolina General Assembly. Because it is an honor and a privilege. And it should always be looked as an honor and a privilege by us. Uh, you know, I, I remember when I was growing up, uh, Fred Moore was our representative, and good Lord, Fred could move heaven and earth, I thought. In the same way, you know, and then Ronnie followed, and then it, it came, and then Senator Odell came along. But it, and then, like I say, the, it, it's just uh, it's kind of a building process, but that, that's really how I got involved. You know, th this thing runs in a cycle. You know, there's some new topics that come up every once in a while, but most of the processes are still the same. And, and it, it's always good. We should never forget the previous members who of our delegation who have been there and seen uh, the Dan Coopers, you know, the Durrani Townsends. Uh, you know, it just the you know just you've got to draw on that wisdom. 
And that's one thing that, that we try to instill in our new members on the delegation. You know, call them up and talk to them. Because we're, we're now the people that are representing the people that they represent. Ronnie Townsend was in the house for 22 years. You know, you guys, that's the best source of information in the world. You know. But it, uh, you've got to draw on that knowledge. There's a lot of institutional knowledge. And the one thing that's kind of scary in the General Assembly, in the next probably one to two election cycles, you're going to see what I call institu a lot of institutional knowledge leave. Uh, you've got some people that are near retirement, and then you have the usual turnover. My freshman class had 21 members. We were 21 brand new freshmen coming into the house in 06. And, uh, you know, I think our, uh, I was elected to special election in the Senate, but then the next year there was, I think, nine, eight or nine come into the Senate, and eight or, eight or nine out of 46 is a huge turnover. The thing we've got to be careful of is, is I call it throw out the baby with the bathwater. You know, there's a reason those folks have been there for a long time. They know how to get things done. And that's why their constituents keep sending them to Columbia. And that's what we strive to do. I, I, I'm born and raised in the friendship community between Belton and Honey Path. I live in my grandparents' home place. I moved 100 yards up the road from my parents, whether that's a good thing or not. Uh, I'm married. I've been, I'll be married uh, 28 years this March 31st to uh, Renee, and bless Renee's heart, she's been with me every step of the way, and we couldn't do what we do without our families. Uh, you know, and that's very important to me. Uh, you know, uh, you'll hear other members of the delegation say this. My wife probably knows as much about state, as much about state government and the workings of it as I do because they're kind of our sounding board. Uh, but they also keep us grounded. You know, you, you come home on Thursday and, oh boy, you've been a South Carolina senator. Well, you walk in the door, well, the trash needs to be taken out. You know? <laughs> uh, I'm a small, I've been involved in the community all my life. Uh, I'm a small businessman. Uh, we run a rural trash service in the lower part of the county. We cut grass and landscape. I grade cows one day a week for the South Carolina Department of Agriculture. We raise beef cattle on our farm. And I tell them, uh, you know, the reason we do so many things, I'm obviously not good at any one thing to make a living at it. And of course, I've got the part-time job in Columbia. Yeah. I, I, I always tell the story. Uh, we get paid one check. The day we walk in, our check's laid on our desk. And uh, when you walk in, well, what they didn't tell you, they said, oh, you're going to make $10,400 a year. Well. They take out insurance, retirement, Social Security, health insurance. We pay $125 to park in the parking garage a year. <laughs> so my $10,400 averages a net of about $3,300, a little over $3,300 a year. And somebody always asks, well, what are you going to do with that $3,300? I said, go home and pay taxes. <laughs> Uh, you know, and now we do get we do get a stipend, a monthly stipend for in district. It's a thousand dollars, and they take taxes out on that. Comes out to about eight hundred. Uh, you know, and I dare anybody to follow me for a month and tell me I'm making money on that eight hundred dollars if you're doing your job the way you should. Uh, you know, I, it's kind of a two-edged sword. Would you get better people if you paid more? Maybe. Maybe not, uh, you know, but the thing about it, pay really doesn't come into consideration in what we do. It's pure public service. It is pure public service, and you've got to want to be there to be there. And, uh, you know, I, I tell everybody, I said, no, nah, I said, don't believe that stuff you read on the blogs and everything else. I said, we're not getting room. I said, if there's a room full of money, I've been looking for it for 12 years, and it's not there. But, uh, it, uh, you know, like I say, and, and I, I dare say, I do say, 98% of the people are in Columbia for the right reason, for public service, and, and they've got their constituents to help in mind. Uh, my phone number, 864-844-3614. My email, MikeGamble at sccenate.gov. Uh, come see me. Call me up. I'll meet you. Uh, you know, come call me up. I, I, the, that's the part I like. I had a meeting yesterday morning with, a, with two parents uh, uh, of, a, of a young son that tragically been killed a couple years ago in an incident that we all know about. Uh, but that's where you really stay grounded. And, and the key to what we do is when I'm, whether I'm talking to you or who I'm talking to, you got to remember what those folks issue is the most important thing in their world right then. And that's the one thing Senator Odell had the, best, the biggest gift for that I've ever had. When you talked to him, you were his number one focus and priority. And, and it it's an art. You learn that over time. 
I think. But, you know, email is the best thing in the world for us that ever happened because, and I'll ask everybody that calls me with an issue, I said, do you do email? And if they say yes, I said, well, if you would, put it in an email because I can forward that email that's written in their words straight to whoever the person is that can help them or address that problem. You know, it, it, I don't need to get in the middle and booger up the explanation, you know, because it, it, it's, it's fresh on their mind and they know the ins and out of it. So, uh, you know, but that, that's the best way, you know, and, and like I say, we're out in our community. I, uh, you know, I always use, you know, you see me at church, you see me at the bank, you see me out to eat, you see me in the grocery store. Uh, you know, and the most satisfying thing that we do is you see somebody out and they say, hey, you know, you helped me with something, something or whatever, if they got an, even if they got an issue that we couldn't help them with. Uh, you know, that, 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 that's the crux of what we do. Always remember when you meet that person on the street you don't know that you don't know, you don't know where they're from and you don't know why they're here. They may be from a company, they may be from you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you know, be the friendly, conscientious citizens that we've got in Anderson County. That helps us more. And if you've ever got a question about an issue, you know, we live in a social media world now with Facebook and uh, Twitter and all this kind of stuff. Somebody put something out there that doesn't look exactly right, or says something about us. You know, we, you know, we're all crooks. We're in Columbia. We're doing, but call us. We'll tell you the truth.